Hello, I'm Dinis Demir. This year is by a guru. This, this guy here, you see, is by Bure. So by means king in Timini. Right. And he was one of the pioneers on the northern side during the Hot Tax Rebellion. During the Hot Tax Rebellion. They, this was a Timini king that negated the Hot Tax. So there was a time when um, a protectorate was declared over Sierra Leone in 1896. The British institution, what you call hot tax, that uh, the Alunians and the protectorate will have to pay tax for their houses. And this man said, no, I'm the landlord. How can a landlord pay rent? So there was a whole rebellion back then in 1898 that is referred to as the hot tax rebellion. So by Bure fought against the British in that hot tax rebellion. He was exiled in Gold Coast. Now today, uh, Elmina Castle. So these are places that they were shipping people, exile them, keep them in the dungeons, either later send them to Seychelles. He did the same as well to King Prempe. So if you go to Elmina Castle in Ghana, you see the history of King Prempe. King Prempe was exiled to Sierra Leone before it, it was taken. It was taken to she says. This also is a Mende queen. It's a Mende queen, Madame Yoko. She was a pioneer of the traditional female secret society. That the Mende is called Sande, and the Timini is called Bundu. Right. So it's the secret society is part of the rites of passage for women graduating into adulthood. So that's the process that the Mendes, the Timinis, it's, it's a wide range of tribes that do that female uh, initiation ceremony. It's not, only, it's not even only in Sierra Leone, but if you go to Liberia, you go to Guinea, these societies are still there to date. Okay. So this is the big market. I know people might visit there later. Yeah, we'll go like yeah. that. So this, this is a big market. If you want arts, antiques and stuff, you find it inside this space. Wow. Yeah. Near here is Thomas Peters. So Thomas Peters is connected to the founding of the name Freetown today, right? So he was he was one of the leaders of the 1792 group of 1,000 plus Africans that came to Freetown, right? So his name is really connected to the founding of Freetown that we see today. So this is a man that fought as a black pioneer during the American Revolutionary War, taken to Nova Scotia, petitioned to be brought into Sierra Leone.
This is Edward Wimo Blyden. So, if 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 you're studying Pan African yeah. history, Definitely. you can you can you can study Pan African history without knowing E. W. Blyden. So, we we wow. historians mostly refer to E. W. Blyden as the father of Pan Africanism. So, born in St. Thomas in the West Indies. Yeah, yes, yes. So he was born there. Yeah, US right. so he was born he was born there. He was to be educated in the US. You know, at the time with racist or segregated laws, black people weren't even accepted in certain universities. So he wasn't accepted in the university. That's that's what got him to come down to Africa. He came to Liberia. He served as the head of the university in Liberia. He even contested the presidency in Liberia. He didn't win the elections and he also moved into Sierra Leone. So he was one of those uh, scholars that was pushing for Africans to really understand and get confidence in themselves. Right. So most of his work was around uh, black consciousness, black pride, and also the, the educated level of how black people were. So he was pushing a lot around his work. Had a newspaper, writing a lot. So, and, 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 and he did a lot of expedition. Even when uh, the colonial government wanted to establish the railway in Sierra Leone, they used his research paper. Because he has done an extensive work that he referred to as the Falabai expedition. That is, so moving into different spaces in Sierra Leone. And it, 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 so basically, he was having as an ambassador, taking uh, people around locations in Sierra Leone to understand really that this is how viable these locations were. So E.W. Blyden is a great African. And he died in Sierra Leone. Hello. So the streets we're working on is Wallace Johnson Street and it's named after this guy. So he was an activist, he was a writer, trade unionist. So he he he, he was the pioneer to found what we call the West African Youth League. So, and we should we should keep track of what Nkrumah and others also formed in in in, in UK where they were studying. They call it West African Students Union. So, so 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 all about Africa's or uh, independence around African states within those days were pioneered by these guys. Solanke, Abad Makoli, Ghanaian lawyers and also Nigerians who formed themselves in that in, in, in that union that we can because of our education we can also push uh, independence for this region. So they, they they constructed themselves in that West African network. Most of them also got education from Freetown and they went to establish their own. So most of the civil service that was created in colonial times, most of these guys were educated here as lawyers and stuff because Freetown was like this, the headquarter for the British West Africa. So for instance, um, what we know today as present day Ghana or the Gold Coast, all of administrative activities Work, work around Gold Coast was then centered here. So for instance, the governor in Freetown supervised Ghana, supervised Gambia, supervised Nigeria. For the British? Yes. So this is how, this how central Freetown was in this region. So everybody was coming here. Just like it was renowned for 
being called the Athens of West Africa. We all know how Athens have for Greek education and Greek uh, academies. So that's how uh, Freetown was called as the like as this as a hotbed for education. People all over the world, African Americans who are leaving their universities after graduation, coming to Sierra Leone just to get a taste of Fra Bay College. Because after the after the collapse of Timbuktu, we all know how the the, the Sankore University served as a piece of ancient education in Mali at the time. So after the collapse of Timbuktu, there was no alternative in the whole of West Africa until, un, unless Frabe College. Because Frabe College had been established as the first Western style university on the continent of Africa as early as 1827. So if you are in Africa and you needed a Western education, you need to come to this location. This is how central the hub was. So a lot of scholars were coming in just to get a taste of how Freetown is and how they can write scholarly works of the contribution of this space to education across the world. So when we talk about Fobe College, Fobe College history is not just limited on Sierra Leone. We're talking about Sierra Leone, the Western, West Coast region, the whole of the continent of Africa. Because as early as in 1876, the same university degree you had at Probe College was the same university degree you have at Durham. So they were, they were linked. So it was an affiliated college with Durham. So if you graduate from Probe College, you are graduating with a British degree as well. So, 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 so that's how it was until the Alun got independence. This is a new uh, city council building. We'll, we'll go one after we We'll go to the top. Okay. This is a new city council. So the mayor in, of Freetown now sits in this building. So this building used to house the, the railway station. Right. So Sierra Leone established railway lines in 1898. In 1898, they established a railway line to go into the provinces, get goods, and then bring it to the ports. And we know, when, when, when you walk around the west coast of Africa, you see, see even when you have defunct train lines, but those train lines link to a port on the continent. Most spaces you go, you go to. So that's how uh, going into getting the raw material, bring it to the port and export. So that's in 1896 you had a protectorate declaration over Sierra Leone. And in 1898, a train line was facilitated so that they could get goods, raw materials from there and then get it to, to London and get industrialization kicking. So this, that's, that, that's another way as well that Africa contributed to industrialization of the West. Because before you have proper energy sectors in the West now, most of the mechanics or the machinery we are run by raw materials from Africa. Say for instance, palm nuts. There was no petrol at the time. So they're using these to run machines and get production up and running. So they, today we don't have a train line. We have, this is now converted to a bus station. So people come here, get bus, and go into the provinces. So there's no train line running again because we had a total closure of the train, the Israeli railways in 1975 fully. 
So from 1975, there was no train running again in Sierra Leone. So today, you just have relics of the railway, right? So we will end our tour okay. here today. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. April 2023, we are rolling back to Sierra Leone and word on the street, more than likely there will be another citizenship ceremony. So if you are eligible for citizenship in Sierra Leone, please visit donfo.africa. That's D-A-N-F-O dot Africa. Again, vi please visit donfo dot Africa. Even if you're not eligible for citizenship, we are still rolling to Sierra Leone next april april of 2023 april of 2023 we are rolling back to sierra leone we'll love to have you if you guys hear the waves in the background and the sea that's the atlantic ocean i'm in senegal right now my hotel the back patio is right on the water check this out Dinah Samir, search for Huru. Until next time, family, peace.